watching a 1956 film called The Violent Years. It's an American exploitation film directed by William Morgan and apparently written by an uncredited Edward D. Wood Jr. It's a silly movie about rich, spoiled girls who have a gang that rob gas stations, rape men, steal sweaters, and their big crime at the end, they vandalize a high school. Anyway, besides the poor directing, it also has some ridiculous dialogue. They're shooting back! What'd you expect him to do, throw powder puffs? Well, our ammunition can't last forever. How many have you all got? Well, then what's in my gun? All I've got left is in my gun. I've got ten shells in my pocket, then poof! We'll have to beat it to the car. The leader of the female mob is Paula Perkins, played by female actor Jean Moorhead. Jean, in my opinion, actually does a pretty good job considering the absurd dialogue she's asked to speak. I began to wonder, who is this woman? So I looked into her a little. She was a gorgeous blonde, a beauty queen who had measurements that drove men crazy. It is said that she couldn't be photographed badly. She was a perfect 35, whatever that means, the most curvaceous girl in radio. She started movies at age 11, and while her film career never really took off, her modeling radio and television careers seemed to be pretty successful. And then suddenly she was gone. Not dead. She just disappeared from public view, not a trace. I found after much research, well, there's a lot of questions that I just can't answer. And believe me, research wasn't easy. Right away I saw most biographies, and by biographies I mean the few short ones on Wikipedia and IMDb, state that she was born on February 4, 1935 in Los Angeles, California as either Barbara Jean Moorhead or Alma Jean Moorhead. But since she went by just Jean Moorhead, I'm not going to worry about it. And was she born in LA? Almost every mention of her on the internet says so, but in quite a few newspaper articles, she indicates she was born in Knoxville, Tennessee, so I'm pretty sure that's correct. The date of her birth is also up for question. Was she born on February 4th or August 13th? And was it 1935 or 1936? The spelling of her name made things problematic. I thought it can be spelled Moorhead, Moorhead, or Moorhead. Of course, there could be three different people that all sort of look the same, but I don't think so. On top of that, Barbara Eden, the future star of I Dream of Jeannie, was born Barbara Jean Moorhead and grew up in California. And when you add in the fact that there was a Broadway actress with the same name that died in 1935, well, you can see what I'm up against. I did my best to sort it out, and as far as I know, she is still alive at age 86. So if you out there know Jean Moorhead and want to correct or add a lot more to this video, please let me know. I'll do an updated video in the future. Still, this video should provide more information about her than you can find anywhere on the internet. Now I found this article in the Knoxville News Sentinel from 1938. The baby is listed as Jean Moorhead. Now it's probably not the same Jean Moorhead, but the name and place seems to be right, so you never know, so I'm just going to pretend it's her. But I do know that she was born in Knoxville and had a younger sister, Marilyn. Her parents moved the family to California when she was five. They settled in Santa Monica, where she attended high school and college. By the time that she was 11, she had an uncredited part in an RKO film called Banjo about a girl and her dog. There she is. She's the taller one of the kids. Her character name was Judy. Dr. Hartley's the best doctor in town. Then we gotta get him. She's blonde, blue-eyed, and beautiful. An accomplished ballet dancer with no ambitions to make dancing a career. Dramatic perfection is her goal. I want to grow up to be like Ingrid Bergman, she said shyly. A lofty ambition indeed. It does seem like she was a member of Ben Bard's Playhouse. Ben Bard was a silent film actor turned acting teacher who trained such people as Alan Ladd, Jack Carson, Shirley Temple, Angie Dickinson, Cliff Robertson, and Gig Young. She appeared in a play called Ah Wilderness. In May of 1950, she was one of four participants in the Teleteen Queen contest on KECA-TV. 
I don't know if she won, and by September she was in the Miss Teenage America contest. Screen starlet Jean Moorhead will be interviewed during the Radio Theater Proceedings tomorrow at 9 p.m. over CBS WNOX. Now at age 15, she had to go to court to sign a contract with 20th Century Fox. The article said she was discovered by producer Daryl Zanuck after she was in a documentary film about Hollywood. I can find no information about that film. It's not on her IMDb. And it says she signed a seven-year contract with Fox. If she did, it didn't seem to amount to anything. As far as I can tell, she only did a handful of films, all bit parts, over the next five years, and only a couple with Fox. Though I suspect there were a lot more bit parts that just aren't listed. But she's very mature looking for a 15 year old, don't you think? So her acting career wasn't taking off, but that was okay because starting in 1951, she was doing more and more modeling work. Jean was also entering beauty contests, like winning California Elks Miss 906. 906 is the number for Santa Monica Elk Lodge. In 1952, she was Miss Shrimp Boat. Now at age 17, she was doing a radio show called Stars Over Hollywood and Lux Radio Theater. Here she is in 1953 at an auto show. By 18, she knew just how to pose for the camera. She had another uncredited part in a film called Golden Girl, which starred Mitzi Gaynor. I couldn't find a copy of that film, but she was also in an RKO film called The French Line as a model. I think that's her there coming in on the right. If that's not Jean, well, then your guess is as good as mine. She was always being honored, like being Girl of the Week on Hollywood's Road to Fame and stars over Hollywood's March Girl of the Month. In June, she was crowned Miss Hollywood and was planning to represent Hollywood in the Miss Universe contest. First, however, she had to win Miss California, but came in as runner-up to Marcella Roulette. She was named Queen of the Living Show. I'm not sure what that is, but it was for nine days at the Pan Pacific Auditorium. As we move into 1954, she was still doing the occasional uncredited film appearance, modeling in local television and radio. She had a small part in the 1955 Fred Astaire film, Daddy Long Legs as a College Girl. My guess is that's her on the left, but again, I'm not sure. She continued with beauty contests as she entered the Miss Rheingold of 1955 contest. Rheingold was a popular beer at the time, who elected a new Miss Reinhold every year to represent the brew. Hey, my respect for her just grew a little bit more. She was chosen the Max Factor Girl, and as you can see, again it says she was from Knoxville. It also states that she had done 20 pictures, but only 5 appear in her IMDb. In June, she was Miss Cinderella and played a role in a TV show with Ken Murray called Where Are You? Beautitious Jean Moorhead, Bay Area resident who was recently named Miss KNX because she was a perfect 35, adds a figurative T to her title as she moves over to KXT as a regular on Peter Patter's Jukebox Jury. By the end of 1955, she was Junior Chambers Miss America Football, and apparently, it states, her measurements were 35, 24, 35. She was blonde, 5 feet 5, and weighed 118 pounds. By the end of 1955, she took a big step in furthering her career when she appeared in Playboy. She was Playboy's Playmate of the Month for October of 1955. Keep in mind, that was back in the days when Playboy didn't necessarily show a woman in all-out bare skin, just enough to tease the reader. The Playboy spread helped the now 21-year-old land the role she's most famous for. 
That was a great break for me, she said in an interview. Before it appeared, I was typed as a real nice girl. The sweet kind. These were the only kind of parts I could get. Afterwards, they gave me the lead in The Violent Years, a quickie movie shot in five days, faster than TV. It was about girl delinquents, and I was the chief delinquent. So, in 1956, Jean was a star in a movie called The Violent Years. Okay, it wasn't a big-budget Hollywood flick, but heck, it still gets watched today, and she utters the immortal lines... Apparently, she made many commercials, including a Coca-Cola commercial that was played all over the country. I'm not sure if this is her ad, but she could be the girl on the left, don't you think? And Jean was a model for the new Olympic swimsuit. She also appeared on the cover of TV Week. She was traveling the world. Well, at least I know she went to Australia and New Zealand. Jean Moorhead is one of the prettiest girls on TV, and it's not surprising that CBS officials chose her to go to Australia for the debut of TV. I'm guessing TV was something new in Australia in 56? Anyway, she seemed to be having trouble with her eyebrows. But she liked the food and was fascinated with making tea that didn't use tea bags. While in Australia, she appeared on the Australian version of I've Got a Secret. She was cast in the film Slim Carter. Producers said the basic requirements were they must have blonde hair, a 36-inch bust, and a Screen Extras Guild card. I've never seen Slim Carter, and the film doesn't appear on her IMDb. Now here's a bit of a laugh. It says she was signed for the main feminine featured part in The Amazing Colossal Man. Let's watch her featured part. It's credited as Woman in Bathtub. Hmm. They call that a featured part? She did get a sizable part in another low-budget film called The Motorcycle Gang. Wow, get those lightning rods out of here. Go get yourself insulated. Put your dark glasses on. I'm having trouble with my crutch assembly. Will you check it for me? Right here in broad daylight? You're so funny, I could split your sides laughing. Yeah, I'll take a look at it as soon as I finish this bit. And she still got the occasional TV role, like this episode of Bachelor Father starring John Forsythe. I remember. You used to have sneezing fits. You were allergic to my paints or something. You'd get them at the oddest times, Bentley. And this from an episode of Ozzy and Harriet. You folks are coming over to dinner, so I'm making a pot roast. What for? They're already married. Would you like your family to come over for dinner? And another Ozzy and Harriet. This one, a Christmas special. Well, I'm looking for Dave Nelson. My Uncle Ed said I could find him here. Uh, Uncle Ed? Yes. Uncle Ed Ferguson? That's right. Honey Blonde Jean Moorhead is the unofficial favorite of CBS television photographers and cameramen in Hollywood who find she cannot be photographed badly. In 1958, she had a small role in the Burt I. Gordon attack of the puppet people. The girls are here to visit the factory, Mr. Franz. Yes, Mr. Franz. He'll be with you in a moment. And this is from a 1959 movie called Gunman from Laredo. The only raise I want is another cushion. I could even use two more. How much farther is it to the Laredo cutoff?
Here she is chosen as the girl with the smile that sells by members of the Los Angeles Executives Club. And she was crowned Miss Insurance. She appeared in a film called The Atomic Submarine. It was a small part, less than three minutes, but she does have a bit of dialogue. Hey, look at me. I'm the mother of your three children. Will you please take me home to them at once? There you are. Just drop in any time. Don't bother to call. Just, just drop in. That's my way of life. She was missed lasting impressions. And she showed people how to exercise with a broom. Her last film role was an uncredited part in the film Bells Are Ringing in 1960. I watched the film and I couldn't find her. And then somewhere around 1961, she just vanished. I read that she got married and decided to quit show business. If she did, she must have been serious. After 1962, I cannot find a mention of her anywhere. It is said she married a man named Vernon L. Anchorman on October 7th, 1961. The couple had two kids, but divorced in 1970. In 1982, she married Doyle Wayne Hill, and the two remained together until his death in 2008. I searched and searched and searched some more, but I couldn't find anything else. Not an interview or a newspaper article about her. So if you know anything about her, let old man Kelly know. Here's the thing, you know, I hope that when she decided to retire to give up show business and modeling, it was on her own terms, that it was a, a decision she was happy with and not something that, well, left her with a lot of regrets for the rest of her life. Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. You know, YouTube audiences are the best audiences in the world. Hey, whatever. Thanks for watching. Bye.